So obviously, the issue of climate change is pretty salient among the American people right now because just a couple of weeks ago, the United States government released a multi-agency report with 13 government agencies saying that if we don't act on climate change, not only will that crush the U.S. economy, but it will kill thousands of people every single year. And shortly before that, we had the IPCC report give us basically 12 years to act if we want to avoid catastrophic levels of climate change. And Donald Trump decided to do something that would further harm the environment, specifically marine life. Now, as Hillary Hansen of HuffPost reports, the Trump administration announced Friday that it approved requests from five companies to survey for oil and gas under the floor of the Atlantic Ocean using a process some scientists have warned is disastrous for marine life. The authorizations from the National Marine Fisheries Service allow companies to incidentally but not intentionally harass marine mammals while using seismic air guns to map fossil fuel reserves, according to a statement from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. The new authorizations don't necessarily guarantee that testing will occur since the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management still needs to issue its own permits approving the process, according to U.S. News and World Report. However, the agency's acting director said earlier this year that he expects to give the okay. Seismic testing involves sending extremely loud bursts of air through the water to produce shock waves. Conservationists say the loud air blasts, which occur every 10 to 12 seconds, can go on for weeks to months, are majorly disruptive to animals like sea turtles, dolphins, and the critically endangered North Atlantic right whale. Marine scientist Matthew Hilsenbeck of environmental group Oceana previously compared the effect to dynamite going off in your living room or in your backyard every 10 seconds for days to weeks at a time. The NOAA notes that various precautions will be put into place to mitigate harm to marine life. Those steps include halting surveys when certain species are observed nearby and prohibiting testing in some regions during certain months of the year, like during calving season for right whales, Bloomberg notes. But critics say the precautions are simply not enough. For instance, while blasts will be prohibited within 56 miles of endangered marine mammals, Oceana campaign director Diane Hoskins told National Geographic that sound from the blasts can travel up to 2,000 miles underwater. So this just shows that he has no regard for the environment. He has no regard for marine life. He just doesn't care. He thinks that profits for fossil fuel industries is more important. And why are we letting fossil fuel companies destroy the planet still? Why are we letting this happen? Why is the government subsidizing oil and gas when renewable technology is the way of the future? Wind, solar, hydro, these are things we should be subsidizing. But instead, the government gives subsidies to oil and gas industries. It's corporate welfare. And I'm saying why, but really this is a rhetorical question because you and I both know the answer to this. This is all done because corruption. Politicians receive campaign contributions from oil and gas companies. And additionally, they're lobbied. I mean, these companies spend tens of millions lobbying every single year. And as a result, the politicians do their bidding. That bidding being allowing them to basically wreak havoc on the planet. So we all have to deal with the cost of them ruining the planet also that way their CEOs can fatten their pocketbooks even more. I think that it's really time for liberals to start thinking boldly and really being a little bit more aggressive in how we talk about the fossil fuel industry and in a discussion with Kyle Kalinske on The Michael Brooks Show, Michael Brooks basically said, you know, if I were in control, I would nationalize the oil industry. And I 1000% sign on to this. Even if that's not feasible, if liberals start talking about the oil and gas industry in this way, because that's something that is necessary, I think that that would scare the shit out of them. Because if you start hearing echoes in American discourse about nationalization of the oil industry, which has been done in countries before, I think that that would scare them.
I mean, maybe it wouldn't scare them too much, but we've got to at least try to move the Overton window back to within the realm of reason because these oil and gas companies, they're allowed to do anything and our government not only lets them get away with it, but we embolden them. We give them subsidies. But getting back to Donald Trump, because I don't want to divert attention away from him too much, I'm starting to think that Donald Trump isn't an immoral individual. He's just an amoral human being. He doesn't necessarily weigh out, you know, the morality of any of the decisions that he makes. He doesn't think, is this right? Is this wrong? Uh, what will be the ripple effects? You know, what consequences will result from my actions? And then what waves of consequences will follow that, you know, were caused by those actions that I took? I mean, he just... He doesn't think about these things. He just acts based on instinct. And to be fair to Donald Trump, he's not the first president who is allowing companies to ruin the planet for increased profits because what did Obama do? He opened up the Arctic for drilling. So understand that this is a trend that Donald Trump is continuing. But I think that we have to have someone in the White House who doesn't just acknowledge the importance of climate change and the urgency with which we need to act, but someone who is going to take bold action. Not just some mealy-mouthed corporate Democrat who's going to pay lip service to us. We need bold, revolutionary, New Deal level of action. And we all know who that person is. The only person who's come up with a bold plan, who signed on to Ocasio-Cortez's Green New Deal, and that individual is Bernie Sanders. I don't even have to tell you. So um, I will be doing everything to fight for Bernie in 2020 because it's not just that America depends on him winning, the planet depends on him winning because I truly believe he'd be a world leader on this issue. Support this podcast by becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash humanist report.